Hey guys, it's Mikey's Mind here. Welcome back to another book review. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate that. Um, today I'm going to be discussing Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, an absolute classic. If you uh, are currently reading any classics or plan to shortly, uh, let me know in the comments what you've got lined up. I'm always interested to hear what you're up to. But yeah, it's not the first uh, Robert Louis Stevenson I've read. And it's not the first time I've read Treasure Island. I read it once before um, for study. Um, I believe it was on a children's literature module at university in my undergraduate and um, I remember enjoying it quite a lot. I didn't enjoy it so much this time round for reasons I'll sort of try and explain. Um, I've got mixed feelings about the book and I, my feelings for it aren't even complete to be honest but I'll try and explain what it is, I, I, how I experienced this book. Um, one thing I will say though is that um, if you've read it get in touch in the comments I'm always you know I'm open to discussion about it and I think uh, a couple of people already said that they didn't like it too much. Uh, a couple of people got in touch with me. So do let me know your thoughts and feelings on this book. And perhaps we can sort of work our way through it. The other thing I want to say before I get into it is that um, along with A Christmas Carol and, and a couple of others I read, it, it, this is one of the most um, adapted to stage uh, stories of all time. Um, it's had many, many, many productions, many small and big on screen, off screen, on stage, all sorts. Um, and having read it this time I really based on the characters and the action um, between those characters I would really like to see it on stage so again if you've seen any adaptations um, beyond maybe the Muppets um, get in touch so yeah um, 1883 I think it was let's make sure yeah written 1883 and it says that it said on the back about this is the um, oxford university uh, oxford world classics um, edition and it says on the back about how it um challenges it says that stephen reinvented several genres with treasure island it's a boy's story that appeals as much to adults as to children and whose moral ambiguities turned the victorian universe on its head so a divisive book um a powerful book I suppose within its genre and I think that's where I kind of got lost with it I suppose um it in some ways it feels like a, a you know a, a classic Victorian text um then it's sort of an adventure it's part thriller um it's got lots of classic sort of children's literature elements and and a child or a young protagonist and so yeah it is quite what's the word in terms of genre, I suppose it's a little bit problematic. It it, it resists, um, it resists clear labelling. But anyway, um, it's an adventure um, to Treasure Island. Uh, Jim Hawkins finds himself in the possession of uh, a treasure map and uh, is whisked away to the other side of the world for a seriously perilous and, in some ways, doomed adventure on the seas. I kind of expected to see more of the journey there. The journey there is kind of like, and then we sailed there and it's and it's really quite brief and it's straight onto the island or at least the outskirts of the island. It's got a very vibrant cast. Um, I did I did struggle at times uh, following different characters and more so their kind of like allegiances. Um, you know, when you factor in morally ambiguous characters and mutineers and then you've got quite honest and moralistic characters. Yeah, I did get a little bit lost and and i found myself having to check um sort of spark notes and and summaries and things like that as i went anytime i finished a part i sort of went back and read online a, a, a sort of summary or a synopsis of that part and and just made sure that i was following which you know for it's a bit embarrassing really for a book uh, for children but i can really see why it was was so snapped up among children and adults when um when it was published first and and since you know it's it's got that cross appeal for sure there are times when it's really dangerous, really quite violent, and I imagine that would be quite exciting to young readers um, in the late Victorian age and, uh, you know, the late 19th century. And, and, and even so now, I think it would appeal to just about anybody. And I'm not sure Jim is... Um, I'm not sure Jim is as um, fleshed out as I'd like him to be as a protagonist and as a young, sort of vulnerable young man taking his life into his own hands and, and embarking on a journey that will change him forever i don't i don't think we quite I, don't, I didn't quite get a sense of that as i said the characters long john silver um ben gunn and uh, parrots and <laughs> it's 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 a really colorful cast and i will just say that i think the book starts out so well it, it almost reminded me of a uh, of a daphne du maurier book at the start um it felt so when you're when you're at the inn when you're when you're in um oh, what's it called 
Uh, I forgot the name of it. Admiral Benbow. When you're in the Admiral Benbow Inn at the start, uh, Jim's inn, his family's inn, um, they're looking after. Um, I really felt like those opening few chapters were some of the most exciting, some of the darkest in some ways. Um, Jim's father dies, and then um, I thought that the ill-fated Billy Bones character at the start um, was was just fantastic. It, it so gripped me to start with that the sort of danger that Jim was inevitably in. Um, the, the pressure that, you know, we've got alcohol abuse and, and ill health and all the rest of it, when Billy Bones finds himself in a sort of skirmish and then has a stroke and, and is, is on his last legs um, for a few days and, and demanding that Jim get him some rum. And I just found that to be really quite compelling. And you could it set a tone, a really uncomfortable tone, um, the danger that Jim would be in among these pirates. I thought the sort of, the, the idea of being haunted and curses and feeling doomed on, on either at sea or, or on the island you know being marooned type thing I, I thought that was quite quite good i liked i liked how um uh fragile their confidence was at times they feel themselves so distant from faith and from from god's protection perhaps uh they feel themselves cursed and they flinch at any movement in the bushes or the trees they're they're on edge um it's a really unsettling experience an unsettling existence for these people when I think back to my sort of childhood reading and things like that, I think encountering a real pirate, um, finding a map, a treasure map, um, journeying to that location. I think when I think of my sort of seven or eight year old self, um, these are some of the most exciting things that could ever happen to anybody. And uh, I maybe don't give it enough credit for those core adventurous occasions and events and circumstances, you know, perhaps they're they're more exciting than my adult self realises. And yeah, you know, hostages and skeletons and hordes of gold and caves and unexplored islands and ah, oh, it is more exciting than perhaps I realise. And really, I think it's, you know, when you think about sailing from Bristol to wherever Treasure Island may be, um, they stop off in the South Americas on the way back to, to gain more crew for the journey back to Bristol at the end but um so presumably somewhere south I, I don't really know but um just how um easily manipulated how unreliable how vulnerable how drunkard and easily sort of led astray these men are and um, there's so much self-interest and to take the risks that they do um it is it's fascinating anyway another classic um on the channel um that I've reviewed and um, here's to many more, you know, I there is more um, Robert Louis Stevenson to read, naturally, um, which I plan to do in the future. Uh, but in any case, another one off the top 100 list. Um, I'm glad I've read it. I can tick it off. And uh, yeah, as I say, I'm, I'm perhaps I'd look to see I, I want to see some quality adaptations of it. I think I think that'd be the next step to enjoying this story even further. All right, thank you so much for watching this video to the end. And, um, you know, as I say, if you're new here, I hope you earned your subscription. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much. There will be many more reviews of all sorts of books along with the top 100 on this channel going forwards. Cheers for your time today, guys. Take care.